pata pata dance. Do you remember? Well, let's review a few of the steps to get started. So we went right touch, out and in, and then left touch, and then our toes went out, our heels, our heels, our toes. Let's do that part again, ready? Toes, heels, heels, toes. Good, and we said it was like a penguin, or a pigeon, or a penguin, and then back to normal. And then after that, we had our right knee twice, kick, kick, jump to the side, and clap. Yeah, just like that, very good. So let's see if we can check, kind of do it all in time, nice and steady. One, two, here we go. Out, right out, good, and left. Toes, heels, heels, toes, knee, knee, kick, kick, jump, and clap. Perfect, all right. So we've got our feet down. Now let's see if we can add our arms in. This is where it gets a little bit trickier. So on our touches out, we're gonna come up and snap when we touch out and clap when we come in. So it's gonna go snap, clap, snap, clap, snap, clap, snap, clap. Can you try that with me? Ready, go. Snap, clap, snap, clap, snap, clap, snap, clap. Good, okay. So we've got that. The next part that I think is really challenging and I have had to practice this on my own to be able to teach it to you is that when our toes go out, our arms are gonna go like this. So we go toes, heels, heels, toes. Let's, all right, let's try that again. So your elbows go out when your toes go out and then when your heels go out, your arms go up back up with your elbows when your heels come in and then back up when your toes go straight. So when it goes, whoop, I messed up already. <laughs> when it goes toes, heels, heels, toes, that's our arms. Up, down, up, down, like that. Okay, ready? By the way, don't forget, this is not a demonstration for you to just watch. You have gotta be up moving and doing it along with me, okay? This is some serious coordination stuff. Like I said, I've had to practice too. So please join in and practice with me. So let's try this again. We're gonna go toes, heels, heels, toes. See, I'm still goofing it up a little bit here and there. Let's try that again, ready? Toes, heels, heels, toes. Great, okay, I'm moving forward. I'm hitting my backdrop here. So Let's try that from the beginning up to that point. Ready? It doesn't get any harder than that, I promise. That's the hardest it's gonna get. So we're gonna go touch, touch, left side, left side, and then toes, heels, heels, toes, knee, knee, kick, kick. And there, your arm, we're gonna just let our arms do whatever you want. If you wanna like snap with it, you can, oops, sorry, that's our knee. <laughs> if you wanna snap with it, you can. If you wanna kick, and snap. I'm gonna let you choose what you do with your arms there. And on our jump, it's still just normal. And then our clap. So it's really just those first two parts, all right? Let's try it one more time, our tempo, before we try putting it with the music. All right, ready? Here we go. Touch. I forgot the clap. Here we go. Touch, clap, touch, clap, touch, clap, touch, clap. Toes, heels, heels, toes, knee, knee, kick, kick, and then jump and clap. And then we start again. So remember, it's that four ball dance. We're gonna keep going the whole way around. Are you ready? Okay, I'm a little nervous because it's tricky, but I know you can do it. Do the best you can. Guess what? If you mess up, we're gonna start it again, the next set of counts. So you just hang on tight and wait until we start and pick up again. Here we go. One, two, ready, here we go.
we made it two times around. So that's really, really good. If you had trouble with it, here's another easy thing that you can do. I can't slow the music down on Spotify, but you can slow down a YouTube video that this is a part of. So if it's too hard at this tempo, go to the little gear at the bottom, put it on 0.75, rewind it back, and see if you can try it at a slower tempo. Anyway, I had fun dancing the pata pata with you. It's a great way to warm up our bodies and our minds because it's kind of like a thing, right? So you might use it again as another warm up later on, but I really enjoyed learning it with you this week. I hope you had fun with it and you should teach somebody because it's a good challenge, right? Well, have fun dancing the pata pata. All right, let's learn and meet our next three animals in Carnival of the Animals. Do you remember who our composer was for Carnival of the Animals? That's right, Camille Saint-Saul. He was our composer. And do you remember what time period he was a composer during? Yes, the Romantic era is when Camille Saint-Saul was a composer and wrote Carnival of the Animals. Well, last time we got to meet the lion, the hens and roosters, and the wild horses. Let's move on today and meet the tortoises. The music in this movement is played very slowly. What's another musical term for very slowly? Largo by the piano and the strings. The composer makes a joke by taking a popular can-can melody and slowing it way down to sound like the tortoise. So the can-can melody is the one that goes like this. Yeah, it just repeats itself. So I bet you recognize that song. And they take that song. That's what you're going to be listening for. And they're making it really slow like this. Yeah, they're making it sound like the tortoise is either dancing to it or playing it by making it really slow. So let's listen to the tortoises. Don't forget to make a note or start writing down what are you noticing about the music and how is it making you feel? If you didn't do it while you were listening, now you can pause the video, make a note of what you noticed about the movement and how the music made you feel. This one is very relaxing to me. When you're ready, push play and you can go on to the next animal. If you need to rewind it back to listen to the tortoises again, feel free to do so. Let's meet our elephants. The music in this movement is clumsy and heavy, and it features the low sounds of the string bass along with the piano. You can even hear the elephant dancing and swinging its trunk in the music. See if you can hear that as we listen and start thinking about what are you noticing and how's it making you feel?
love this movement. I, if I use my imagination, I can totally see an elephant slowly dancing to this song. And I love the sound of that low string bass. So go ahead and pause, make a note about what you noticed about the movement and how it made you feel. It just makes me feel happy. All right, last animal for today, we're gonna meet the kangaroos. The music in this movement is played by two pianos. Again, just the two pianos. They play short and detached. Do you remember what that Italian word was for short and detached that we learned for the hens and roosters? Staccato, yeah, say staccato. Staccato is short and detached. It's supposed to sound like kangaroos hopping up and down the piano keys. I definitely think that Camille Saint-Saëns did just that in this movement because that's exactly what it sounds like to me. Let's listen, and as you listen, you can start to make a note. What are you noticing, and how does it make you feel? All right, now that we've had a chance to listen, if, if this is not a super long one, so if you need to listen again, you can rewind it back and start making your notes about what did you notice about the movement and how did this music make you feel? Again, I just really like this one. I think it's really silly and super funny because it does kind of sound like they're just jumping all over the piano keys. So pause it, go ahead and write, and then when you're ready, you can move on to the rest of our lesson. Help me review our Tidio song for an assignment in Schoology in just a little bit. Let's sing our rhythm syllables. Here we go. Ta di ta di ta di ta. Ta di ta di ta di ta. Ta di ta di ta di ta. Ta di mi ta di ta di ta. Ta di ta. Ta di ta, ta ka di mi ta di ta di ta, ta di ta, ta di ta, ta ka di mi ta di ta di ta. I apologize, my arrow got stuck there for a moment. So don't forget, we do have to do that bottom line two times because of the repeat signs. So don't forget about those repeat signs. Now, let's try singing our song with the words. Ready, here we go. Pass one window, tidy-o. Pass two windows, tidy-o. Pass three windows, tidy-o. Jingle at the window, tidy-o. Tidy-o, tidy-o. Jingle at the window, tidy-o. Tidy-o, tidy-o. Jingle at the window, tidy -o. Okay, now I'm going to show you in Schoology how you can do the assignment. We're going to be sorting the measures. In Schoology, you'll click on Start New Attempt, and then you're going to see our song, but it's going to look like this, all scrambled up and we have to figure out the order to put it in. Now yours are not going to look in this same order. I'm going to re-scramble them for you, but I want to show you just how to work on it, how to know what to do. So we always have to start with what at the start of our song? Yeah, our treble clef and our time signature. So we have to know that has to be our first. Mi, so, so, la, mi, so, so, or pass one window, tidy, oh. Now our next line says, 
Pass two windows, tidy o. So we need to look for that measure. Does this one work? Pass two windows, tidy o. No, because this is a takadimi anyway, so it would be takadimi like that and not pass one window, tidy o. So we know we need to go up. I hear the notes go up. Pass one window, tidy o. Ooh, that one looks like it works, so we'll drag it up. So top to bottom, you're putting them in order. And then we have pass two windows, tidy o. Hmm. So it needs to look like this, I think, right? Pass two windows, tidy o. Is there another that looks like that? Yes, down here. So we bring that one up, and then we have Jingle at the window, tidy o. Well, these both look the same, but one has a repeat sign. We don't repeat yet, so it must be this one. And then we know this has to be the end, right? And here's the beginning of the repeated section, so we can reorder them. Tidy o, tidy o, jingle at the window, tidy o. I think we did it. So once you're done, make sure you click review and finish or submit and check your song. Make sure you agree with the order of it. And when you click on finish or submit, I'll be sure to get your results. All right, good luck and have fun putting those measures in order. We are going to practice comparing some musical terms today. We're gonna to start with our tempos. Do you remember what tempo means? how fast or slow our music is. So our first tempo we're going to review is presto. Do you remember what presto means? Yeah, presto means very fast. So if we're listening for tempos and we hear one that's very fast, we'll know that it is presto. What about allegro? What does allegro mean? That's right, allegro is fast. How about largo? Yeah, largo is slow. Very good. Largo is slow. What about andante? The, now these next two are newer ones. So andante is a walking pace. And then moderato is slightly faster than a walking pace. But it's not allegro. So that's tricky, right? We're listening for the differences between kind of fast, medium fast, and then walking pace. We have slow, so here we go. We're going to listen. Our first one we're choosing, is it allegro or is it largo? Let's listen really carefully. Tap your hand to keep the beat. All right, were you having to tap your hand quickly, allegro, or was it slow, largo? I agree, I had to tap my hand allegro to keep the steady beat. Yep, good job, that song is allegro. Let's check out our next one. Moderato or presto? Okay, were you tapping your hand moderato, which was a little faster than walking pace, or presto, very fast? I agree. I think it was moderato. Let's check it out. Oh, we are right. We hatched our chick, but our allegro stayed. <laughs> All right, let's check out our next one. We're between presto or largo on this one. Presto or largo. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, did you think that was presto or largo? I agree. I say presto because presto means very fast. That's right. Good job. It was, in fact, presto. All right, here's our next one. We're between allegro or andante. Do you think that song sounded allegro or andante? Do you remember what they mean? I agree. I would go with andante because allegro means fast and andante is a walking pace. And I think that sounded very much like a walking pace. Let's check it out. Oh, we're right. Andante is correct. Good job. We have two more tempos to compare. Allegro and moderato. Allegro and moderato. See which one you think it is. Right. Did you have to tap your hand allegro or moderato to keep the steady beat? I agree. I think it's moderato because allegro is fast and I didn't have to tap my hand fast. It was just maybe a little faster than walking pace. Yeah, good job. It was moderato. All right, last one for our tempos. Andante versus presto. See what you think about this one. Do you have to tap Andante or Presto to keep up with that piece? I agree, it was Presto, let's see. Yeah, it was very fast. It was a very fast tempo. It was not just a walking pace, right? Good job helping to compare those tempos. Now let's switch gears and review some dynamics and compare those. What does this symbol mean? Good, so if you said piano or soft, you are correct. Soft or quiet is what piano means. What about this one? Yeah, forte or loud. Okay, so that's kind of the basis for the rest of our dynamics. So what does this one mean? Yeah, it's called fortissimo or very loud. What about this one? Uh-huh, pianissimo, or very soft or very quiet. Okay, what about this one? Do you remember? Yeah, mezzo piano or medium soft. So a little louder than piano, but not as loud as forte, right? And then what's this one? Yeah, mezzo forte. So it's a little louder than mezzo piano, but softer than forte. Good, so our dynamics are always relative to one another. And we have to work hard to make sure that if our music says to play one thing, we're following along. Well, let's compare in our first song, is it fortissimo or pianissimo? Did you hear fortissimo or pianissimo? I agree. I would say that was pianissimo too. Let's check it out. Ah, uh, we're right. Good job. All right, here is the next one. Again, we're between fortissimo or pianissimo. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah. 
Fortissimo or pianissimo? I agree, fortissimo. Good work. All right, here is our next one. And this time we're choosing between mezzo forte or mezzo piano. <laughs> Okay, so this is a tricky one, right? Because they're both kind of in the middle. Are you leaning mezzo forte or mezzo piano? I would be leaning mezzo forte. Let's check it out and see if that's which one it is. Uh, it was mezzo forte, medium, loud. Okay, in our next one, we're comparing forte versus piano. Okay, did you think that sounded forte or piano? Do you remember which is which? I agree, I think it's piano, soft. Good work. Okay, here is our next one. Between mezzo forte and mezzo piano. Mezzo forte or mezzo piano? I agree, I would say mezzo forte. It was more loud than soft. All right, we have one last set of dynamics to compare between fortissimo and pianissimo. So let's listen. Was that fortissimo or pianissimo? Yeah, you're right, it was pianissimo. Very good job helping to review and listen for those dynamics at the end and the tempos at the beginning. Great work. Said the first oboe, leaning in close. If I were you, I'd question the brass instruments instead. They're a violent lot. The brass? The inspector said, writing in his notebook. You really think so? You can trust me, the oboe said. Everyone trusts me, after all. I tune up the entire orchestra by playing an A. Listen. You can't argue with that, the inspector said. Brass, what do you have to say for yourselves? Last night was incredibly important for us, proclaimed the trumpets in a boisterous manner, a phrase which here means loudly and with a certain arrogant rudeness. 
We announced the arrival of kings and presidents. We led soldiers into battle and held a parade when they got home. Our ears are still ringing from all the ruckus. Inspector cried, making a note in his notebook. Perhaps you murdered the composer for making you play so loud. We love being loud, the trumpets replied. Brass instruments are brassy by nature. Besides, loud is patriotic, and we suspect the murder was committed by a foreigner. A foreigner, the inspector repeated. What say you, French horns? You have a strange accent. The French horns did not understand the question and began murmuring a story about the old country. When the war slid our hearts like a cantaloupe and the boy and the girl were the cantaloupe. Is the same sad story Melon and melancholy Leave the French horns alone, the trombone said. They were in such a state that we took them out to the club to cheer them up. We ordered a few bottles of expensive wine and then took the stage, swinging and dancing until dawn. Barging in as only percussion instruments can do. We drummed, we percussed, we employed xylophoniness and symbolism. We heard the beat and beat the herd. We struck up and got down. We conquered the concert, batted the band, agitated the audience, rattled the roof, and got the phone numbers of several very attractive young sailors. By then we were beat. Too exhausted to commit murder.
And what about you, Tuba? The inspector said. Were you involved in these distasteful shenanigans? No, the Tuba said. I'm a confirmed bachelor. I was home all night playing cards with my landlady, the harp, taking sips of warm milk from a little blue cup. The inspector flipped through the pages of his notebook and scratched his handsome head with a well-manicured hand. I'm utterly baffled, he said. I've questioned all of the instruments in the orchestra, and none of them seems to be the murderer. The violins waltzed. The cellos and basses provided accompaniment. The violas mourned their fate while the concertmaster showed off. The flutes did bird imitations repeatedly. And the reed instruments have the good taste to admire my jacket. The trumpets held a parade in honor of our great nation. While the French horns wax nostalgic about something or other. The trombones had too much to drink. The percussion beat the band. And the tuba stayed home playing cards with his landlady the harp, taking sips of warm milk from a little blue cup. But the composer is still dead. for a grilled vegetable burrito right now, or what do you call those things where they take the meat and the potatoes and they wrap them in a sort of phyllo dough? Or maybe it's a... A strange noise caught the inspector's ear. Of course, he said. The conductor! You've been murdering composers for years. In fact, wherever there's a conductor, you're sure to find a dead composer. Beethoven, dead. Bach, dead. Brahms. dead. Mozart. Dead. Haydn. Dead. Schubert. Unfinished, but dead. Mahler. Mahler. Dead. Chopin. Romantic. Dead. Tchaikovsky. Dramatic. Dead. Stravinsky. Ecstatic. Dead. Schoenberg. 
incomprehensible, but dead. Berlioz, dead. Purcell, dead. Prokofiev, dead. Debussy, dead. Vivaldi, Wagner, Sibelius, Ives, Handel, Britain, Mendelssohn, Scriabin, Liszt, Messian, Copeland, Cage, Dvorak, Sostakovich, Ligeti, Miroslavski, Corelli, Bellini, Puccini, Rossini, Scarlatti, Busoni, Boccherini, Verdi, J.C. Bach, W.F. Bach, C.P.E. Bach, Offenbach, dead composers litter the musical world, and it's all because of one man and one little stick. Arrest him at once! Not so fast, said the entire orchestra in unison. The conductor didn't work alone. All of us have butchered a composer at one time or another. But we also keep composers alive. Without strings and woodwinds, without brass and percussion, there would be no composing at all. Um, except for various kinds of non-orchestral music. If you want to hear the work of the world's greatest composers, you're going to have to allow for a little murder here and there. But, but that's injustice, cried the inspector. Those who want justice, said the orchestra, can go to the police. But those who want something a little more interesting should go to the orchestra. So did you figure it out? Did you know exactly what was going on by the meaning of the composer is dead? Well, in this story, all of those composers listed are composers that have passed on, but it's important for us to continue to listen and to keep that music alive. And if you become a, an instrumentalist, you help keep those composers alive by going and performing their music too. Well, don't worry, there's lots of composers that are still living and they're really important to listen to and to play as well. And remember, you can be a composer too. I hope you enjoyed the book, The Composer is Dead. I think it's a really great listen and a great read. And I love the narrator. He does such a good job of creating the drama with his voice. So. It's been fun to study instruments with you and now get to apply them to a book. <laughs>